Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering The Long Silence and a little bit of Awakening of Medivh from Chronicle Volume 2. So let's go! Kill Jaden decided it was time to let the boss man know how things had been going on Draenor. So he met with Sargeras. The Legion's ruler was pretty pleased. These orcs were an unstoppable force and loyal. But better still, he'd been searching for the right weapon to weaken Azeroth's defenses. Seemed like the Horde might be able to do that. So he ordered Kil'jaeden to cut all communications with his agent Gul'dan. Which Kil'jaeden didn't mind too much, because whenever the orcs won a battle, they became really smug and arrogant about it. Sargeras wanted them on the brink of self-destruction, desperate enough that they'd do anything to save themselves, maybe even travel to another world. Meanwhile, the orcs weren't exactly sure how they felt about everything that had transpired. On the one hand, they'd conquered the planet, but on the other hand, that planet was kinda dying. Fell magic had transformed most of Draenor into a barren wasteland, Tanan Jungle made this pretty obvious. It wasn't a jungle anymore. It became known as Hellfire Peninsula, and the capital at its western edge was renamed Hellfire Citadel. Blackhand knew his horde were going to run out of food and water at some point, so he turned to Gul'dan and demanded answers. What's Kil'jaeden said? Surely he foresaw this and proposed a solution, and Gul'dan was like, Oh, would you look at the time? Sorry mate, I've got an appointment or something. In truth, Gul'dan was crapping his pants. Kil'jaeden had stopped talking to him, and he was extremely paranoid about it and also bitter and angry because Kil'jaeden had promised him godhood if he destroyed the Draenei, and guess what? He's done that, so where's his bloody godhood? He wondered if Kil'jaeden had just used him and the orcs. But he wasn't going to let Blackhand know that. His connection with Kil'jaeden gave him influence. If they knew he was no longer communicating with the benefactor, he'd be seen as weak and probably killed, because no one likes him anyway. So he convinced Blackhand to wait whilst Kil'jaeden chose their next move. In the following year, hunger took its toll on the orcs, most of Draenor's native creatures were hunted to extinction. The Dragonmoor started eating their own bloody dragons, which gives their name a new ironic meaning. The Warsongs did the same to their wolf mounts. The threat of starvation made the orcs a lot more agitated, and they still had bloodlust searing through their veins, but no one to fight, except each other. These battles were short, but fairly costly. The Lightning's Blade, White Claw, and Red Walker clans suffered greatly in these conflicts. The Warsongs, Bone Chewers, Laughing Skulls, Shattered Hand, and Thunderlords went completely mental. Blackhand banished them all from Hellfire Citadel to protect the rest of the Horde. He drove them into remote areas of Hellfire Peninsula, where they could fight amongst themselves or something. This helped to preserve some of the Horde's dwindling strength, but Blackhand and Gul'dan knew it was only a temporary solution. Something needed to change, real fast. Sargeras observed all this and was pretty pleased. Soon, the Orcs would find salvation. He'd been corrupting a vessel on Azeroth who would launch the Horde's invasion of that world. That vessel was Medivh. I've already covered Medivh's early years and lineage and all that stuff, so we're just going to jump straight into him waking up from his coma, literally picking up from where Chronicle Volume 1 ends. Medivh's coma had lasted almost 10 years, and things had changed. Lane Rin was poised to become King of Stormwind, and Anduin Lothar had risen through the ranks and was a highly regarded knight. Although they were happy to see their friend had recovered, they were a little bit preoccupied by troubles brewing in the south. Stormwind's farmers and settlers had been pushing south to claim more territory, and they'd ventured near the jungles of Stranglethorn Vale. And when they came face to face with Gurubashi trolls, it didn't go so well. Lane's dad, King Barathan Rin, dispatched his forces in a defensive manner. They could intercept raiding parties but not retaliate into Gurubashi lands. He didn't want a full-scale war with the trolls. Ain't nobody got the time for that. But Lane completely disagreed with his father. He recommended a sterner approach. Teach them a lesson, even if it means invading their territory. These debates between King and Prince grew heated. They were both like, You what, mate? Medivh spent the next few months not really bothered or involved in Stormwind's politics. He was struggling with the guilt of his father's death, plus he didn't really understand why his dad exploded. He was also having unsettling dreams. Some contained a strange woman, telling him to go to a place called Karazhan. Other dreams had a dark presence hanging about in his brain, twisting his thoughts and playing silly buggers. And he was like, ah, whatevs. Probably nothing to worry about. He decided he felt more at peace when he was with his friends, so he focused his attention on helping them and joined the fight against the Gurubashi. And we're leaving it there! In the next Volume 2 video, Lane, Lothar and Medivh are going to go out on a secret mission, which is going to ignite a full-blown war between Stormwind and the Gurubashi. As always, thanks very much to those of you who have become patrons. Your support is very much appreciated. For anyone who's interested in either checking out the Patreon page or supporting the channel in that way, links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks, and all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!